picking up where uh, Tony left off. White House is again calling on Congress to pass some kind of ban or renew their previous ban on assault weapons, which has repeatedly faced strong opposition from Republican lawmakers. For more on the dangers of these lethal semi-automatic weapons like they are 15, let me turn to Dr. Joseph Sacron. He's a gunshot survivor himself, also an advocate for gun violence and prevention and a trauma surgeon at Johns Hopkins uh, Hospital. Uh, Dr. Sakharin, the, the, the destructive power of AR-15 style weapons, we've seen it used time after time. Uh, Uvalde, Boulder, Orlando, Parkland, Sandy Hook, I mean, the list goes on and on. You say the impact is even more acute, more horrific on the body of a small child. Explain what you mean. Yeah, well, thanks so much for having me. And as you can imagine, every day uh, we continue to wake up in America as children are slaughtered in schools and in cities and communities all across this country. And when you think about the assault style rifles and you think about the damage that can happen to the human body, um, it, it's quite devastating because the projectile, the bullet, that's traveling at a very fast speed, imparts energy onto the surrounding tissue that causes a blast effect. And this blast effect can result in pulverizing bone. Uh, it can result in really destroying organs. And you can imagine that in children and little babies where their organs are so compact and, and, and put together that the energy that's transmitted can cause much more damage and so much higher lethality. It's absolutely devastating the type of carnage we're seeing. And frankly, when you look at who is primarily seeing the devastating consequences of these military style assault weapons, it's the children that are in the classroom, it's the parents that have to identify the bodies and it's the frontline providers like law enforcement and medical examiners, and of course, us as healthcare professionals that are taking care of these patients. Well, you bring up a good point, a good but really sad point here. How difficult would it be to identify the remains of victims hit multiple times by these AR-15 style weapons? Well, I think as, as you, know, you alluded to, we've seen numerous prior mass shootings like Uvalde, where the destruction of the human body was so severe that parents had to identify their kids through DNA test. So just think about that for a second. They can't even identify their own child. And that has resulted in some horrific, you know, things where you see parents that are taking pictures of their kids so they can remember what they're wearing before they go to school. This is where we are in this uniquely American problem that we face. And we have both the opportunity and the responsibility to tackle this public health problem in a way that allows us to put our children first. Well, what is your message to Republican lawmakers who time after time have pushed back against efforts to enact a ban on assault style weapons, uh, weapons I should say, amid heavy lobby from the NRA, uh, we have quotes from Republican lawmakers as early as today saying this is about mental health, this is about Second Amendment rights. Yeah, so I think this is just the typical rhetoric that we hear every time we're seeing these incidents happen. The reality is this, is that the majority of Americans actually agree on the common sense legislation that we need to pass to make communities safer. This is about responsible gun ownership. We saw last year where, you know, a bipartisan group of senators came together, right, to pass the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. That was an incredible first step, but it's not enough. Like any complex public health problem, this is gonna require a multifaceted approach that cuts across disciplines. You think about Tennessee, right, that doesn't have extreme risk protection orders or universal background checks or a ban on assault weapons, right? There's so much opportunity that we have and, and we have to act now and we have to put our kids first. Um, I think a lot of people would agree uh, with that, Dr. Sacron. And finally, I have to ask you about your own uh, personal experience, your own 
nightmare, what you yourself endured at age 17. Tell us a little bit about it, please. Yeah, I mean, it was it was tragic because, you know, here I am, the son of immigrants. My parents came uh, to America in search of the hopes and dreams that so many of us strive for. And I went from being this healthy high school senior to collateral damage after I was shot in the throat with a 30 caliber bullet. And that was, I, I would say, looking back, you know, the worst moment of my life. But it also turned out to be the most impactful because it inspired me to go into medicine. It inspired me to become a trauma surgeon. And frankly, when I initially went down this path, it's really to give other people the same second chance that I was given. But the reality is, is that the best medical treatment is prevention, which is why, you know, I work in my capacity as a Brady board member, as a trauma surgeon, and as an advocate at the intersection of medicine, public health, and public policy, so we can implement data-driven solutions. And that's something that we all have to be a part of. All right, well, we certainly appreciate uh, your take on this, and we're so glad you're okay. Uh, Dr. Joseph Sakharin, thank you.